In this video, we're going back to JavaScript to basics. We're going to talk a little bit about what a closure is and how you can use them. Let's start with a really basic example of closure in JavaScript. We have a function here called get greeter. We're doing two small things here in this function. We're setting a greeting and then we're returning a function that allows you to greet someone using that greeting. So you can see we can create our greet function itself by calling get greeter and then we can call greet. We can pass it a name and I think we can all see that we would expect to see hello Andrew logged out here. Maybe I can run this by doing node closure. And as you can see, we've got hello, Andrew being printed out. So where's the closure part here? The idea with the closure is that our get greeter function runs once and it runs once here on line eight. And then long after this function has completed running, we can call our greet function, which is the function this returns. And even though the get greeter function has completed, we still have access to this constant that we create inside the get greeter function because the greet function that we returned from this function was created inside the scope of this function. We still have access to any values that were in the scope of this function. So even though get greeter completed a long time ago, the greeting value still exists and still can be accessed. And that essentially is the idea of closure. The idea that our outer function here closes over our inner function. And therefore, as long as our inner function is around, it will have access to the scope of the outer function. Let's look at a few variations on this though. One interesting variation I think is that we could actually convert this greeting from a variable that is assigned inside the function to an argument. Maybe it has a default value, which is hello. And so if we run this, we see we still get hello, Andrew. But what we could also do instead is pass an argument to get greeter. So we could say, and if we do this, you can see now we get goodbye, Andrew printed out to the console here. So what we see here is the argument itself is also part of the scope of the function, of course. And so we have access to that argument inside the function that we return. Now, this may feel like kind of a contrived example, and it is, but let's talk about where a closure may come in handy. One of the really cool things about closures in JavaScript is that they allow you to create secret values that can't be accessed from other parts of your code. So for example, here we have a create assert secret function. So we set up our secret here, which is foobar, and then we return a function that takes some argument and compares it to the secret and it will throw an error if it's the wrong secret. So this is one example of a way that you could create a function that has a handle to a secret value essentially and can use it, but doesn't actually expose it to the place where you are calling a cert secret. And this is actually an important part of the closure, right? There's no way for us to access this constant directly. So we can call the create assert secret function. We can get this assert secret function out of it. There's no property here though that gives us access to that. We can't do create assert secret dot secret as if this was a property on an object. We certainly don't have this property on our assert secret function. The only thing we can do is call the assert secret function to do our comparison here. Now you might think that this pattern is a little bit out of date and I guess that's kind of true, but it isn't as out of date as you might think. You might think that with classes, we kind of already have the ability to do these types of properties. We know we could do a class here. Maybe we want to store that secret here as a property in this class where we could say foobar. Up until the ECMAScript 2022 standard, there wasn't really a way to create a truly private field on a class. Now you might be saying, what about TypeScript where I can say private S, but keep in mind, TypeScript just compiles down to JavaScript. So the private is stripped out and then you just have a publicly accessible variable. Now, as part of ES 2022, you can do the pound sign or hash s. And this creates a truly private field that can't be accessed from outside this class. If we create a new secret here, there's no way for us to do this. As you can see, I even have the error here, property pound s is not accessible outside the class secret because it has a private identifier. So this is the way you might do this in ES 2022. But before ES 2022, before private fields, a closure was as far as I can think of, really the only way that you could create a private value. Now, if there's other ways that I'm missing, definitely let me know in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that closures were really the right way to do this. There's an interesting idea that you can explore, and there's a lot of discussion online about this, about the similarities and differences between closures and objects. The idea is that with a closure, you can pretty much create a lot of the basic behavior that you would have in any object an object being something that, you know, is going to encapsulate both data and functionality. Here's an example of a closure that is 
may be kind of close to the behavior you could create in an object. When we call create averager, we get this function and we can pass arguments to this function to kind of start adding numbers to our list. But then if we call this function with no argument, we actually get the average printed out. And you can see it's pretty basic to do. We have two variables here that we will access through closure, our sum and our count. And then we return a function that takes some argument. And if the argument is not null or undefined, then we'll add it to our sum and we'll increase our count by one. But the case where there's no argument given, we're still just going to return our average. And so you can see we can pass in one and two and three. And I guess we could console log on each of these because we're going to get a running average. But instead, I'm just going to log at the end and we should see the average of one, two and three is, I guess, two. Let's go ahead and run this and we can see the average is two. This is a very basic example of the idea that a closure can often take the place of an object in some cases. Sometimes if your objects are simple enough, maybe they would just have one or two functions on them that are kind of wrapping some data. This is an interesting pattern to explore. The last thing about closures that I want to point out is that you use them pretty often in the node standard library. So here we're using the net package, which allows us to create a simple TCP server. If you aren't familiar with net and creating a server, it's very simple. You can see we create the server and pass it a callback function here. Whenever there's a connection, we get a new socket, and then we can listen to events on that socket. Now, if you've worked with the low level node libraries like this at all, you're probably familiar with this event driven model. And often you do need to capture some data outside of these individual events. If you're reading a file, for example, you might want to have some set of data and you want to append these chunks to that data as you go on. And then when we get like the end event, then we can process that data that we have collected. In this case, I'm using the idea of summing instead of averaging. But I think what I want to do is maybe let's make a few changes and try and use our create averager function here. As you can see right now, this is pretty basic. So we create a list of numbers and then inside of our callback. So even though this callback is not a function that we return, it still has access to our numbers array here through closure. This function here is essentially being passed as an argument to socket.on. Long after we call socket.on, this function will be called. When that function is called, our nums array will still be here, thanks to closure, still be around ready to use. So it's pretty basic what we're doing in here. We're just cleaning up the input. And if the input is an empty line, then we're going to sum up the values we've received so far and print them out and clear the array. Otherwise, we'll parse that to an integer and push it into our array. Here's how we could do this. Let me create a split here. We're going to start up the node server and then let me do another split here. And I'm going to use netcat or nc and we can connect to localhost 8088. So we could say one, two, three, and then we can hit enter to get an empty line and six. Our sum is being printed out. And then we could do seven, eight, nine, enter and 24. Our sum is being printed out. We could actually play around with using our averager instead. Maybe this is interesting. We already are tracking the sum here. So maybe first of all, we can have this return both the sum and the average and we kind of need a way to reset this. So maybe we want a specific argument that is about resetting these numbers back to zero. If the argument explicitly is null, then we can set sum equal to zero and we can set count back to zero as well. So let's go ahead and replace this up here. Average equals uh, create averager. And then what do we need to change? Well, right here, just get the sum and the average out of this by calling AVG with no arguments. And then at the end here, we're going to have to call AVG with null in order to reset it. And then down here, I think all we need to do is instead of doing nums.push, we can do average of n. Just for fun, we now have closures wrapping other closures, right? So our average here is going to have access to sum and count only through its closure. It doesn't access them directly. And then our socket callback here is going to be accessing our averaging object or closure through closure itself. So let's see if we got that right. Let's restart our node server over here and let's go ahead and recreate our connection. So we can say one, two, three, enter. Excellent. And so we get six being our sum and then two being our average. And if we do seven, eight, nine, we have 24 being our sum and eight being our average. Cool. So that was a beginner's look at closure in JavaScript. It's a pretty powerful feature of the language. And I think it's probably fair to say that without closure, JavaScript would not have become nearly as popular or as flexible as it is. So you have closure to thank for the fact that we're writing and talking about JavaScript today. All right. If there are other basic JavaScript ideas that you want me to cover in a video here, definitely leave a note down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.